Well, good morning once again. Well, it's been just fun worship this morning. Again, want to welcome you on this 4th of July weekend. It's a great weekend to be here. Uh, we are in the middle of, as you know, a sermon series called I Believe, Downloading the Faith. And uh, this uh, sermon series is all about uh, what Christians actually believe and why it actually matters. You see, Christian theology uh, is often seen as some ivory tower idea, but truly Christian theology actually has life applications. And so we actually download those apps, those applications, right, into our lives. And today's downloadable app comes from 1 John. 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 through 12. And before we read this though, let's pray that God would illuminate his word into our hearts and our minds and our lives. So let's pray together. Gracious God, we come before you on this Independence Day weekend. Grateful for the freedom that we have ultimately, Lord, freedom from sin and death because of you. And on this day, as we think about the world, think about our country, and Lord, think about you, we, we think of the awful things that are happening now. Certainly Baghdad today and, and, and the recent violence in, in Bangladesh. Lord, we pray for your freedom and peace around the entire globe. And Lord, this morning we now come before you to get a taste of you from your word, that you would, by the power of your Holy Spirit, be at work in our own hearts and minds and lives. Uh, to live in the reality of our dependence on you and independence from everything else. So God, we pray that as we open your word now that you would do your miraculous, life-transforming work in our lives. And we know you will do this, Lord, because we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord. Amen. So this is 1 John 4, verses 7 through 12. Let's listen to God's word for us. John writes, Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So who has heard this scripture passage read before? Familiar with it? It's a great passage. It's a famous passage. It's one of the most articulate statements about true love in the New Testament. And so we are going to be downloading the Love app into our lives today. But true love is not easy to figure out. I uh, recently heard from a mom who shared me about this story. It happened in her kitchen recently. She has a daughter and a much younger son. And uh, this mom was uh, part of the conversation happening and her, her little son said, Mommy, when I grow up, I'm going to marry you. <laughs> Well, of course, the older sister, who's much smarter than the son, she said, Oh, wait, you can't marry your own mother. And of course, the boy was shocked. And so then he said, Well, then I'm going to marry you, he said. <laughs> the sister said, You can't marry me either. And of course, the mother had to help out a little bit, since the boy was just so confused. And she said, Honey, you really can't marry somebody in your own family. And the boy was shocked. And he said, You mean... I have to marry a total stranger? <laughs> True love is so hard to figure out. 
Now media, our media has so much to say about true love. We hear it in the movies. We see it in, in love stories. We hear it in the love songs. We, there's so many songs written about love, like from, I've been dreaming of a true love's kiss. You know that one, right? Hopefully. No? Disney? You gotta love it. All the way from that to another song called Love Stinks, right? And of course, it's all over Barry White. Oh, whoa. So, we ask the big question, what is Love. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Thanks, techno pop guy. <laughs> See, the world wants to know what is love? They've been singing about it. And the truth be told, so do we. We want to know what love is. Now, English only has one word for love. What is that word? Love. love! Very good! You could write that down in your notes. Um, while English has only one word, John wrote this text in Greek, as many of you know. The New Testament was written in Greek, and Greek actually has four words for love. Greek is a more precise language than English. So in Greek, one type of love is eros. There, you see it there on the screen. Eros which is a self-satisfying love. It's mostly used, almost always used, for a sexual love. It's a conditional love. It's based on attraction to another person. Again, think Barry White uh, in his music. Uh, so love is, uh, this kind of love, this kind of eros is very self-serving. Now another type of love is phileo. We have that up here too. Phileo, which is a friendship kind of love. Phileo is the, an, an affectionate relationship, uh, a, a, a reciprocal relationship. It's, it's higher, the Greeks considered it higher than Eros because it is about our happiness, not just my happiness. So that's phileo, our happiness. And uh, phileo is the beginning, as many of you may know, phileo is the beginning of the word Philadelphia. What does Philadelphia mean, anyone? Brotherly love. Feel love. Delphoi is, is brother. So brotherly love. Philadelphia. Brotherly love. So that's phileo. Now the third love in Greek is the word storge. Now this kind of love, storge is based on natural obligation. Storge is the kind of love that's often described as the love within a family. It's also a love for one, uh, one's own sports team. <laughs> or, or the love, honestly, the love for one's nation. This, this weekend, there's a lot of Storge going on. You know, that patriotic feeling like, ah, oh, my country. Storge. That's Storge love. Now lastly is agape love. Now this, how many of you have heard of agape before? Yeah, okay, great. This is the noblest love. This is the utter, most utterly selfless love. Agape keeps loving even when the beloved is unkind or unlovable. This love, agape love, desires only the good of the one loved even in the face of self-sacrifice. This is agape love. So in our passage it says, God is what? Love. love. That's right. So the question is, which love is it? What is love? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Thanks, techno pop guy. So the world asks, what is love? And we ask the same thing. Of these four loves, if you were to guess, which one of these is used in our passage today? Agape, that's right. That's why some of you have heard it. Agape appears 15 times within these six verses in some form or other. 15 times. And its most striking use is that God is agape. God is agape. Now, the world will often turn that around. You see, don't get confused. God is love. But that doesn't mean that love is God. A young man wrote a love note to his beloved. 
And he wrote this. My dearest love, if the world were the Sahara Desert, I would crawl on hands and knees through the burning sand just to be with you. If the world, the whole world were the Atlantic Ocean, I would swim through shark infested waters to be by your side. He said, if the whole world was like the African jungle, I would fight through lions just to be with you. And I cannot wait to be with you this Thursday, if it doesn't rain. <laughs> See, our human experience of love is so imperfect. And it's broken. You see, that is not God. We use the word love to describe our feelings toward chocolate. We use love to describe our feelings toward a new car or a TV show or a political candidate, but maybe not recently, but <laughs> when we say, I love it, so often, when we say that so much, we often become immune to real love. We don't know true love. So we ask, as the world asks, what is love? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt okay, me. Okay. No more. Okay. So yes, the world asks, what is love? We ask, what is love? This passage says, God is love. You see, love doesn't define God, especially our broken version of it. God defines love. You see, God is passionate about you to his core because God's core attribute is agape love. You see, love isn't just one of the things God does. No, everything God does is loving. Because God is nothing other than love. That's hard to hear. And I assume some of you are asking this very question that I ask myself, but what about those times when God seems so unloving? What is it about God that could be loving when we see the pain and destruction and violence in this world? God is love? This is a good question. The best way I can wrestle with this question is to understand it like a child who is dying and his parents are doing everything they can to save this little boy's life. And they give him the worst medicine, the most painful medicine. He goes through these deep medical treatments and this little boy has no idea why his parents are making him go through this. But they do it because they love that little boy desperately. And so like that child's parents, when God acts in ways that seem unloving, believe it or not, it still springs from God's limitless love for you so that you will really live God, how could you let me lose my job? God is love. God, how could you let me have this addiction? God is love. God, how could you let me experience this tragic loss? God is love. God, you do not seem very loving right now. God is love. You see, Christians are crazy enough to believe that God is love no matter what. Everything God does is about loving you and wanting you to know his, his joy and his love and his grace. Do I hear an amen? Amen. So then that leaves us with the last question. What does
does this love look like? Well, if you look at our passage in verse 9, verse 9 tells us it looks like Jesus Christ. It says this, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. God reveals agape most fully in Jesus Christ. This is his way of saying, I love you so much, I would rather die than live without you. And that's exactly what he does on the cross for you. Because God is love. So how does this change the way I live my life? What is the life application for God is love? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell you, turn to your neighbor and say, there's an app for that. <laughs> there's an app for that. Here's the love app. Already? Here's the life application for love. The app is found actually in verse 11. It says this, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. I have to tell you, I have seen verse 11 lived out right here at Moore Park Presbyterian Church. Uh, many of you know that when I first got here, it's uh, not even two years yet since I've been here. Uh, so, so far so good, right? Okay. Uh, uh, you don't have to answer that. Anyway, uh, within the first couple months of being here, many of you know I was the victim of a hit and run car accident. And I had a concussion. Now, before I had a concussion, I thought, yeah, concussion, whatever. No, con a concussion means that your brain slows down so much, you just can't really process very well. And I think some of you wondered what in the world is going on with this new pastor. But my family, as a matter of fact, my family actually said that I had a different personality. And one of the things uh, Paige said is that, boy, that car accident really knocked the funny out of you. That was her phrase. <laughs> It knocked the funny out of me. And so the doctor said, the doctor said that in order to get better, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be on my computer. I shouldn't write. I should not read anything. I, should, I basically had to stop thinking. Of course, I turned to the doctor in my stupor and say, but I have a really thinky job. <laughs> but during that time of difficulty, this church, you all, came around me and my family. You cared for us. You brought food over for us. You prayed for us. There was actually even a group of you that came and stood on our front yard and prayed for me, for my family, for our home, for this ministry. You prayed for us. You revealed God's selfless agape love to me. And since God is love, is alive in you, that God who is love is working in your lives, you could not help showing me and my family God's love when we really needed it. We cannot thank you enough. Have you experienced God's love through others like that? Now looking again at verse 11, John says that we ought to love one another. And as a matter of fact, the Greek here emphasis indicates that we owe this love to each other. Like a debt. You see, God loves you so much to such extremes that you owe it to God to love others like that. This love is a crazy love that we need to reflect to the world. And this love extends out to the world. We know that because John also wrote, as you know, John 3.16, which says, God so loved the what? World. world. God's love for us is the source of our power to love the world. And so this love app sounds fantastic as we're sitting here in church this morning. 
But in all honesty, it is difficult to love the world. God commands that we love whether or not we feel like it. That's true agape love. And that's the challenge here. How can we love the unlovable? How can we love when we don't feel like it? In August of 1955, a young 14-year-old boy was murdered. His name was Emmett Till. And you hopefully have heard of him because his murder mobilized the civil rights movement. You see, Emmett was black. That day, his mother, Mamie Till, put him on a train to visit his cousins in Mississippi and she never saw him alive again. You see, the two white men who abducted him and murdered him were then put on trial and they were quickly set free. And later, one of them actually confessed, but he was still able to walk free due to legal protection. Can you imagine the anger and hatred and, and cry for justice Emmett's mother, Mamie, had to have felt? I have a picture of Mamie Till. Let's see if we can see her. This is her right there. And in this picture, at that interview, when asked about her bitterness toward the two men for the, for the brutal murder of her son, she said this. It certainly would be unnatural not to hate them. Yet I'd have to say, I'm unnatural. The Lord gave me a shield. I don't know how to describe it myself. I did not wish them dead. I did not wish them in jail. If I had to, I could take their four little children, they each had two, and I could raise those children as if they were my own. And I could have loved them. She goes on to say, Can I, I, she goes on to say, I believe the Lord meant what he said. And I try to live that way. Can you imagine? Mamie responded with overwhelming agape love in the face of the deep hate that she had the right to embrace. Now, with a story like that, I don't know if I want to download this love app. It's too much. And how can we love when the world tells us to hate? Can, how can anyone dare to love like that? Yet like it or not, God is love. This is the God we worship. We are commanded to love scandalously like, like Mamie because God loves us like that. This morning, God may be placing somebody on your heart. Someone on your heart to actually love like that. That person may be really difficult to love. Yet I believe God is saying to you, I love you so much that I died for you. Go love that person with my agape love. So in light of the, of the hate and the violence, we think of, 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 of Baghdad, we think of Bangladesh, we, we, we know that the world cries out for that kind of love. So who is God telling you to love this morning? Do you dare to go and love like that this week? It can change the world. So let's remember God's love for us is our source of power to love the world. Friends, as you know, this sermon series is called I Believe, Downloading the Faith. And so let's dare to download the Love app into our lives this morning. There's an app for that. It's what we believe. Now, let's live it. Amen.